Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to get started with building Swift UI animations. We are going to use this tool called Alex. We will start by building a simple scale animation, like you see here. Next, we will modify the prompt to change the scaling animation to move the circle from one point to another. Then, we modify the animation further with another prompt so that we use a drag gesture to create a spring animation. So what you see on the left of Xcode is the tool we are going to use. To download this tool, you should visit alexsidebar.app. We can use Kesa to create the same animation using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Or we can use WinSurf to create the animation also. However, to get an integrated Xcode experience, we are going to use this tool called Alex. One great thing about using Alex is that we can generate our files using Claude 3.5 Sonnet and add them directly into Xcode with the click of a button. So let's go back to Xcode and start creating the animation. Over here, I'm going to select each of the files and delete it. You have noticed here, I have launched Xcode on the right and Alex on the left. Once you open your Xcode project to bring Alex, you should press Command L. After launching Xcode and Alex together, you can select Xcode and go to Window and select the option Move and Resize and move it to the right. Next, you can select Alex and go to Window, Move and Resize and move it to the left. Once you do that, if you move your mouse cursor between the two windows, you can see we have a grabber. So we can use this grabber to resize them together. To add a new prompt for the Swift UI animation, we should select the Alex window and click this plus button to add a new chart. Over here, you can see I have already added a new chart. So this is the prompt we are going to use to create the first animation. So we want a Swift UI spring animation that moves a circle of width 80 and height 80 from point A to B repeatedly. Using Swift UI's face animator, one excellent feature about using Alex is that you can reference the whole Apple documentation of about 40,000 pages. If you like, you can also reference a specific page from the Apple documentation. To reference the Apple documentation, I'm going to edit this chart. So you can see here, you can reference files, your code base, the Apple documentation. If you select this option, you're going to reference the whole documentation. You can also select the last option for an individual page or documentation. For this prompt, I selected the individual option. Since I have already done that, let's cancel it. If I expand this disclosure indicator, you can see I reference the Apple documentation for spring animation and also reference face animator. Swift UI spring animation and face animator are all new APIs. So referencing them this way is going to help the model to generate an accurate Swift UI animation. I have tried referencing the same thing in Kesa. However, anytime I reference a new page from the Apple documentation and use a model like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet in Kesa to create a Swift UI animation, it will still go back and use the old Spring animation in Swift UI for generating the animation. But Alex is able to create the Swift UI animations using the new Swift APIs. So this is how you can reference the Apple documentation in Alex. Once you do that, over here, you can also select the model you want to use. So here I selected Claude 3.5 Sonnet and this is the first response from the model followed by the code it generated. As I said before, this tool integrates seamlessly with Xcode. Once you have your file generated here in Alex, we can do a couple of things. We can copy the code or click this button to apply or use the option Fast Apply to apply the changes directly in your code. But we don't have this file in the Xcode project. So after you generate the code, you can go back to the Xcode project and select a specific folder where we want the file to be generated. For this code, we want to put it in this folder. So let's select it and go back to Alex and click the plus button. You can see here, it is adding it directly in the Xcode project. To bring the Xcode preview, I will press Option, Command and Enter. So this is the original animation without any modification. So let's go through the code. Over here, you can see it defined these two constants. 
for point A and point B using CG point. And since I specified in the prompt, I want to use face animator to create a spring animation. You can see here, it added the face animator view. Instead of using the face animator view to create this animation, we can also use the face animator modifier. But let's leave it this way. So here it defined the properties of the circle. We did not specify any color, but you can see here it is using the width and height we specified in the prompt. The animation closure you see here is used to customize the face animation. For example, here if we did not specify spring animation, the animation will only be generated with face animator. So if I remove this, you can see we still have the animation. So what you see here is a default spring animation from the system. So adding the animation closure, we can modify the animation to use any type of easing we want. And since we specify we want spring animation, that is why we have this spring with duration and bounce. To summarize how the animation works, if you use the face animator modifier, or if you use the face animator view, you need to specify your steps in the parentheses. So here we have two steps, that is point A and point B, which is an array. After specifying your steps in the parentheses, we also need an animation variable. So here we have the variable point, and using the position modifier, we pass the point to animate the position. So this is using the iOS coordinate system, which is at the top left. So it starts with 0, 0 from the top left. We now have the device in landscape mode. However, if you have it in portrait mode, it will be at this side. The initial coordinate of the circle is this one. We have the X coordinate to be 50 and the Y coordinate to be 50. And here we have the second coordinates. Let's put a comment here and set any of these to zero. You can see we now have the circle at the center of the screen. So once you use the position modifier, it will use the iOS coordinate system. That is, we will have 0, 0 on the top left. So if I remove the comment, you can now see we have it on the top left. So I'm going to undo the change. Let's go to the next follow-up prompt. Over here, we have explanation to the first generated code. So as we scroll down further, you can see here, I added another prompt to make the movement horizontal. Then it generated another code here. So let's copy that and select everything here and replace it. So this is the horizontal movement it created. If you like, you can also change the position and use offset to achieve the same thing. However, in that case, you need to modify these values because if you use an offset, the object's initial position will be at the center of the screen. But if you use the position modifier, the initial position of the object will be at the top left, as you saw previously. So in the animation you saw in the beginning of this video, I modified the points this way. Let's move to the next change prompt. Over here, I wanted to modify the animation to use a drag gesture instead. So I specified further, the initial resting position of the object is at the center of the screen. Then I added a specification for the drag gesture. Since this is a modification to the initial code, you can see here, we have the file name as move from A to B. The file name is still the same, so we don't have the plus button like we had it in the beginning over here. So if I scroll down further, I added another prompt to put the content in a new file that is dragged from A to B to Swift. So the code you see here is the same as this one, but this one has a different file name. I did that because we can now click the plus button to add it directly to the Xcode project. So we want to put it in the same folder with the folder selected in Xcode. We'll come here and click the plus button. If I drag the circle to any location, you can see it snaps back to the original location with spring animation. Let's look at the code. Over here, it created this position state variable to define the initial position of the circle using UI screen. So here we have the total width of the screen and dividing it by two, puts the object at the center of the screen. We have the same as the height. We have the total height of the screen and dividing it by two, 
will put the object at the center of the screen. So the circle here has the same properties as the previous one. But now we add a drag gesture. The drag gesture has two modifiers, unchanged and unended. Unchanged monitors the real time progress of the drag gesture. So it triggers this closure anytime we drag the circle to any position on the device. Once the drag finishes, we use unended to call this closure. So if we go back to the prompt, you can see here I specified when a user drags the circle and releases it, it snaps back to the center with a bouncy spring animation. So that is what is defined here. For the X coordinate, we divide the width of the screen into two and the Y coordinate, we divide the height into two so that when the drag finishes, it will still go back to the center of the screen. Let's modify the prompt further to create a scale animation. In the final prompt, we want to modify the original animation to scale the circle's original size from 1 to 0 0.5 repeatedly and put the content in a new Swift file, change size.swift. So it uses the same face animator with spring animation and also the same properties for the circle. Let's select the same folder and click the plus button to add the file to the Xcode project. With the scale animation, I didn't do any changes to the animation at all. We have noticed here for the steps of the face animator, we specified the original size of the circle and its second value and also define the animation variable scale. And using scale effect, we pass the animation variable and use the same spring animation in order to get this repeating scaling animation. So this is how to get started with creating SwiftUI animations using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. We can create the same animations using Kesa instead of Alex. But to get integrated Xcode experience, but to get a seamless integrated Xcode experience, you can try Alex for AI-assisted coding in Swift.